afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me if I do this? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, good. Um, so I just have about 10 minutes to contextualize today's event. And I want to begin by thanking the people that brought us here. First, I'd like to thank the Japan Society, Kazuko Minamoto, Jeffrey Miller, who you just heard from. This is the fifth time that Hibakusha Stories has brought hundreds of high school students to this room to listen to the stories of atomic bomb survivors. In Japanese, the word is Hibakusha. And you all are among the last generation to hear their firsthand testimony. I mean, this is something that's extraordinary, this passage of time. Um, perhaps someday in the future, you will decide to have children, and I'm sure that your children will learn about what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and you will be able to say to them, I met actual survivors, and we have with us Setsuko Thurlow from Hiroshima and Yasuaki Yamashita from Nagasaki. So today is a really, really special day. And it being special too because you've come here from your various schools and you've been brought by your teachers. Teachers are really important. And I'd like to give a special thanks to all of the teachers that brought you here today. My teacher of 30 years, Joanna Macy, is here, <laughs> all the way from California. <laughs> I'd like to say that people matter. Individuals matter. Individual people can do profound things and can affect us in profound ways. Uh, Setsuko, Yasuaki, Joanna, Others in my life have affected me, and I'm sure that you all will carry the wisdom of your teachers, and I hope that you will carry the wisdom that you hear from this day. Um, art can inspire. Art can be a teacher. And I'd just like to take a minute to point to these replicas on the stage. This is um, the work of Iri and Toshi Maruki. These are commonly referred to as the Hiroshima panels. Um, they were painted over years by atomic bomb survivors. And these panels are actually going to be brought to Brooklyn, New York next November in a project with Pioneer Works. And I'm going to uh, tell all of your teachers about that so that you can come back and look at these paintings. Because before too long, we're going to have to look to books look to art, look to films, for hearing the stories of the Hibakusha, because they will no longer be with us. But today, we have the extraordinary possibility to hear firsthand what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, because you're going to be listening a lot, and because we're going to be sitting for a while, I thought we could, we could do a little exercise together, just to gauge you know, some of your uh, talents and ideas and knowledge in the room. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. Stand up. St oh. I gotta give you the reason to stop. Okay, stand up if you play a musical instrument.
Stand up and remain standing if you can name a country that has nuclear weapons. Okay, let's see some hands. Okay, go ahead. The US. The US? North Korea. North Korea. <laughs> genocide, instruments of omnicide, uh, machines that create an instantaneous death through the heat and blast, but slow death over millennia through exposure to radiation. So nuclear weapons are like nothing that the human mind has yet created. And what we will hear from Setsuko and Yasuaki are their personal stories, but also some reflections about what we can do today. I think that um, what's really important for us to recognize as we listen to the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki is that nuclear weapons are not a thing of the past. Right now, we have around 16,000 nuclear weapons in the world. There are about 5,000 of those on hair trigger alert. That means they're ready to launch in two to five minutes. Now let's just have a show of hands. How many of you in the last week have made a mistake? Okay. Okay, good. I'd like you to tell a couple people out there. Okay, how many of you have made a mistake since now and the time you woke up this morning? Okay. Good. I think keep it down. I think that it's important that we recognize our mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. Indeed, that's the way that we grow. But when we think about nuclear weapons, when we think about the thousands of nuclear weapons at this very moment that are on hair trigger alert, ready to launch in minutes, that are being controlled by human beings and by machines that human beings have made. That means that every moment of every day, we are threatened by the existence of nuclear weapons. I think this is really important for us to recognize because deterrence doctrine, the idea that nations have weapons to deter war, is a false notion. And that we need to look at the humanitarian effects of nuclear weapons 
which uniquely Setsuko and Yasuaki can explain and identify. What I'd like to do to end is to just engage with you all in a thought experiment. Um, quick question, who said imagination is more important than knowledge? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. What do you think he meant? Anyone? Go ahead. No, um, what you can like what you can imagine and what you can think of is more powerful and can go farther than more than what you know back then. Okay. So so in essence, we have to think about something, we have to imagine something before it comes into being. So everything that's been created has been first created in the human mind. So sometimes it's really important for us to have these thought experiments, for us to open our minds, open our hearts to the possibility of things, to open our awareness so that we can find the motivation to act, so that we can create a world where those dangers no longer exist. What we hope you will find today is that through the stories of the Hibaksha, you will find the motivation to act for disarmament. Um, I'm just going to engage this thought experiment. I want you to, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think about everything it is that you love in your life. Just allow those people and places and music and literature and places that you like to be and food that you like to eat, just let those things arise in your mind. And I want you to be thinking about those things when you listen to the stories of Setsuko and Yasuaki. Because from one moment to the next, their lives as 13-year-old children, 6-year-old children, it was a time of war, but their lives were moving about in a way that they expected. The sun rose, and their parents were at home, and the daily life continued. Within less than a second, their entire worlds changed. And what they loved and identified with was no longer what they had expected from one moment to the next. So let's just take a moment before we invite our speakers up to the stage and recognize what it is that we love in our lives and prepare ourselves to hear the stories of Setsuko and Yasuaki. Open your eyes. Thank you for participating in this introductory part of our session. Thank you for being here. And um, thank you for allowing yourself to bring this story into your awareness. I think that sometimes these stories are difficult to hear. Imagine what it's like to be reliving the memories of a childhood that was part of one of the worst tragedies known to humanity. And the bravery of those people that share those stories with us is significant, and it is my huge and enormous honor to invite Setsuko and Yasuaki up to the stage, and Clifton Truman Daniel, and I'm going to introduce them as they arrive up here. Thank you, everybody.